do you explain a phenomenon where the lakes in the Great Rift Valley continue to swell even in the dry season? This phenomenon has given scientists and researchers alike a serious headache as they burn midnight oil to unearth the possible reasons. Is nature on a mission to reclaim the lost territory to human encroachment over the years? So if people know in advance that this time they need to vacate, then they will vacate the region for a while until the waters reside. Lake Baringo tourist facilities are submerged due to the rising water levels. Lower campsite is gone. The swimming pool is gone also. And the water is still uh, coming up. The rising water levels have affected the ecology of the riparian regions of the lakes, thus impacting on the biodiversity, wildlife, tourism, infrastructure, and the settlements around the lakes. There is a lot of information, or that a lot of uh, science that is not well understood about these lakes. What is known as the somehow, when it is dry, they all dry. When it's wet, they all become, uh, like now they have swollen. And uh, so, is there any one factor that can be, you know, uh, can you can place a finger and say this is the main cause? There are a variety of them. And uh, I think uh, uh, from the rainfall to siltation to the land use where you have now built and therefore there's no infiltration, so all the water runs into the lakes. But uh, there is also the tectonism that was thought about, that probably it could have been a cause. And all those aspects, but there is not one uh, that you can place a finger on. Even though climate change has been mentioned as a factor contributing to the flooding menace, where rainy season patterns have changed drastically, two theories have been attributed to the swelling phenomenon of the lakes in the Rift Valley. One is tectonic plate movement in the Earth's crust, and two, ecological dynamism involving human encroachment in Mao water catchment areas. Tectonic plate movement along Rift Valley may be squeezing and forcing aquifers or underground water to release water through the bed of the lakes as natural spring water. This may explain the reason why water levels keep on rising even during the dry season. On ecological dynamism over the years, there has been a massive destruction and degradation of Mao water catchment areas, which is the main water tower and provides source of water that eventually feeds most of the lakes in the Rift Valley. Cultivation and human settlements around riparian region has accelerated the degradation of the environment. This means that rainwater cannot be absorbed and retained, especially when it rains. Lack of vegetation which would have otherwise facilitated water retention and slowed rainwater runoff erodes soil which is finally deposited as siltation at the bed of the lakes. Siltation may trigger water levels in the lakes to rise in two folds. One, Siltation will eat into water space and as a result, cause water levels to rise. And two, siltation may fill the floor of the lakes and therefore block the underground seepage. The water therefore cannot percolate vertically through the underground discharge, but can only spread horizontally, hence causing floods. The altitude of these lakes range from 360 to 1,884 meters above the sea level. Lake Naivasha is at the highest elevation, while Lake Tukana is at the lowest. 
Lakes Baringo and Naivasha are the only freshwater lakes in the Great Rift Valley. The rising water of Lake Baringo has had a devastating effect on the investors and the residents living around the lake. The lake region is inhabited by diverse communities from Tugen, Ilchamus, and Pokot communities. The lake's former glory is diminishing day by day as its water levels continue to rise alarmingly, swallowing offices, hotels, restaurants, homes, roads, health centers, and schools, among others. The lake is so critical to the local residents that it does not only quench their thirst, but also serves as the only source of water for other domestic activities. The tourism industry that has always been the pride of Lake Baringo has been ruined by the floods as the investors suffered huge losses. Employees of the multi-billion Kenya shillings, tourists' hotels, lodges and restaurants have been rendered jobless as other sectors of the economy such as agriculture and fishing not spared either. The flooding is also driving farmers from their lands as residents are forced out of their homes. The situation in Lake Baringo is so dire that the raging floods do not only threaten the survival of human beings, but also threatens to wipe out wild animals living in the lake's islands. Kenya Wildlife Service had to make a timely decision before it was too late to relocate these animals to higher and safer grounds for their survival. The animals faced starvation as food supply dwindles, following the grazing latitude becoming smaller and smaller day in, day out, courtesy of floods. Kasi hii ambao umetutukua hiyo muda ya miakatatu, tumuona ya kuwa imefaulu. Kwa sababu tumekuwa na kiwewe kabisa kuona labda wale wanyama atesangamia ndani ya maji na hawa wanyama wamekuwa kabisa uti wa mbongo yetu ya jamii ya ruku. They also faced another tragedy of vulnerability and exposure to predators such as crocodiles who can now unleash attack from all directions of the island. This island in Lake Barinko was part of the mainland along Charo Island and it was abruptly cut uh, by the rising waters uh, from the mainland. Uh, some wildlife remained in the island, including giraffes. Uh, we also have uh, warthogs and impalas that remained in the island due to the abrupt water level start cut off the island. We needed to do active management by translocating these animals uh, to the mainland because currently there is uh, insufficient food for the animals to feed on. So the animals are now being moved from, the, from this island to the mainland Ruko Conservancy where there is enough uh, forage material for the wildlife to continue staying there until the situation uh, changes. Local residents have been forced to abandon their submerged homes, which have attracted new guests in the name of snakes, crocodiles, and other water-based creatures. I'm walking just along the shores of the lake of Lake Baringo. We do both boating, we are also divers, and we also do some bird watching around.
the people living here are really suffering. The water is really, is really increasing day by day. And also, after this water increasing, there's a, little, a big gas that comes from the other shores of the lake. When the water increases, that means the grass is uplifted up because the depth, the, the, the depth of the lake is increased. Mm -hmm. So the roots are pulled up, making it to float. And when it reaches the shores of this, at this point, mm -hmm. it makes a very big, maybe something like a, an umbrella okay. that makes the people living al along the shores of the lake very difficult to get good drinking water because this is the only source of water. We don't have five water around here. Here, Lake Baringo defies natural protocol and conquers unfamiliar territory, thereby invading Kambi Samaki Loruk Road along the longer route of Nakuru Sigor Road. We have crocodiles here, we have hippos and you know it is not safe at the moment. Being a tourist destination, several hotels and restaurants had been strategically constructed along the lake shore. Most of them are now partially or totally submerged, rendering huge losses to the investors. The wrath of nature has not also spared government offices such as Kenya Marine and Research Organization which are underwater. We need all the various actors working together. Various ministries need to be working together so that we understand this system. And we also need a network of monitoring so that we are able to monitor the groundwater, we know what is going on with the rainfall, we have an idea of the evaporation. So all the parameters need to be known. So the information is increase the monitoring network, then also disseminating information in good time. Uh, so that climate or weather information can be disseminated in good time to the locals. Due to proximity between Lakes Baringo and Bogoria, experts express fear of a possible ecological disaster should one day the two lakes merge. The experts put the rate of the lake swelling at 2.5 centimeters per day. Lake Baringo is a freshwater lake while well, Lake Bogoria is alkaline. It is not clear which lake will have an upper hand in influencing the other to become either freshwater or alkaline. In the event both lakes become alkaline, then the economic prowess of Lake Baringo region, which is basically irrigated agriculture, is likely to be heavily compromised as plants cannot blossom and thrive on salty water. If the verdict is that they both become freshwater lakes, then the millions of flamingos in Lake Bogoria will have to find another home for survival. This is because the algae that flamingos feed on can only be found under alkaline conditions. This will naturally kill the tourism industry around the lake. Whatever the outcome, it will have far-reaching effects ecologically. Perhaps a strategic plan to construct a strong wall to separate the two lakes may help to prevent the disaster. The famous geysers and hot springs of Lake Bogoria, which are always tourists' magnet, have been under severe attack by the rising water levels. About 80% of these hot springs are submerged, 
especially the main center of attraction to the visitors. This has made the number of visitors to reduce drastically. The rising water level has also not spared the flow of flamingos in the lake, where the number has reduced immensely. The flooding script is not any different at Lake Naivasha and other lakes. Lake Naivasha is unique as it is home to internationally renowned environmental treasure, as well as a blossoming agricultural industry that exports high quality fresh vegetables and cut flowers to especially European markets. The area produces up to 70% of Kenya's total horticultural output and contribute significant foreign exchange to the national economy. The rising water has had huge acreage under flower production. Several estates and structures around the riparian land submerged. Flower farmers, the area residents and thousands of workers have been rendered jobless. To make the matters worse, hundreds of the displaced families by the floods, especially in Kihoto Estate in Naivasha, face outbreak of waterborne diseases after their pit latrines and shallow wells got flooded by the rising waters. Imagine, Ingawa kwa sahi, tunasema kuna hasara lakini hapo mbeleni, itakuwa faida kwa mvuvi. Kwa sababu saizi, samaki zinaza kwa wingi. E, kulingana na imaji vile inakuja, samaki sasa ziko na furaha. Zinaza kwa kiwango kikubwa sana. Jambo tuye nye naeza omba wavuvi wezangu, tuwe tu patient. Kwa wakati uhu, hiyo samaki kidogo nye tunapata, turidhike tunayo. Tukiwa na matumaini ya kupata mavuno mazuri hapo mbeleni. Kwa hiyo muda yote nimekaa hapa, sijawahi kuona ikiwa imefika hapo. Na nimekaa kwa muda mrefu zaidi ya miaka ishirini. Kuna hasara about to, to my pattern. Yeah, higher via, his viewers could now know who is a Venze to Bado. Now, Venze to Bado, what you call a pattern is the Kiapo. Makinikoa Katu, he might be a one or a This is where we are looking at human beings and what needs to be done so that they could, uh, you know, more or less uh, go back to their livelihood. What went into the people's farms? So, do, are they, how do we compensate them? Or are they given alternative land? And who, then what do you do with this land that is uh, left? Because uh, as it were, uh, this, phenomena, uh, or this phenomenon of lakes, uh, you know, swelling and, uh, and then reducing, it's something that we think is cyclic. Lake Turkana, one of the world's largest desert lakes, has had a fair share of flooding menace among the lakes in the Rift Valley. The irony of floods wrecking havoc to the local residents in the middle of a desert is still a puzzle. About 5,000 residents have been displaced as fishing activities greatly affected. <laughs> Hotels have been either destroyed 
or submerged by raging floods. The water level in Lake Turkana rose about uh, three meters in the last few months and I'm still measuring and every day there is one centimeter or a bit more raising of the water. We lost four pomas completely in the water uh, which uh, is quite a big amount of course of money. At Lake Nakuru National Park, the game rangers are mourning the loss of their senior wardens' houses and offices to floods. The only visible remnants that rekindle memories of once upon a time vibrant offices are the rooftops. Ah! For the first time in the history of Lake Nakuru, the flooding has given birth to tilapia fishing activities in some areas, which is a mystery in otherwise salty water lake traditionally. Being a blessing in disguise, fishing in the lake has become a very lucrative business to fishmongers not only in Nakuru town and the environs, but far and wide in the country. <laughs> Fishing is not allowed within the park because that is an illegal activity and it's not allowed within an area that is a, a national park. What we can just advise the people is that this is not a cassetted fishing area and the fish uh, that are found within like Nakuru National Park has not uh, been confirmed to be fit for human consumption. Water has also invaded the park where roaming and grazing fields for the animals are drastically reduced. Animals are now competing for the little space left, which is likely to trigger human-wildlife conflicts. The painful and heartbreaking flood phenomenon replicated and cutting across all the lakes is unprecedented in the history of the Great Rift Valley. Also just to encourage people to be involved in um, something called citizen science. Yeah? That they are the locals, they are the ones who live there, they can give information of what is happening in the lake because they report the experiences where the flooding was, how high it is every day. There needs to be data. Data for all these aspects, so that you can discriminate finally which is the likely uh, the most uh, you know, significant uh, cause of this swelling uh, in the lakes. And so we thought, well, there could also you know, suggest like there could be a dedicated uh, uh, institute just for the study of these lakes. As we pray and seek divine intervention, it is important for us to be kind enough to restore and respect our environment, not only for ourselves, but for posterity as well.